Chico Sai, ang bandang love na love ninyong i-hate. Habang patuloy silang pasikat ng pasikat at patuloy na pinakikilig ang mga crush nyo, yung iba sa inyo, tuloy-tuloy pa rin sa pag-hate sa kanila. Para sa mga hindi nakakakilala sa Chico Sai, eto sila noon. At ito na sila ngayon. They are one of the most influential bands from the early 2000s and even through various lineup changes, they continue to get bigger and bigger and obviously, they are here to stay. Why do people keep on hating them and how they keep on getting stronger? Most importantly, ano nga ba ang naiaambag nila sa OPM alternative scene? These are the questions that I will try to answer in this video. Hello YouTube! Welcome to Geeky Labs PH. Sa channel na to, we will talk about OPM alternative scene and pop culture in general. Para mas makilala pa natin ang Chico Sai, simulan natin at the very beginning. Migi Chavez and Mong Alcaraz were schoolmates since grade school. And from high school to college during their Ateneo days, doon nila na meet si Calde Calderon at sinali na nga nila ito sa banda nila bilang bassist. This is during the latter part of the 90s. They started out joining inter-school battle of the bands, kaya lang hindi sila pinapalad na manalo. Dahil doon, napag na nila na mag-gig sa mga local bars gaya ng Club Dread. At dito na nga nila na meet at naging kaibigan yung iba pang mga bandang nagsisimula pa lang noon. Tulad ng Slapshock, Greyhounds, Zoom, at marami pang iba. Dito na nga rin nila na meet yung iba pa nilang mga future bandmates gaya nila Huge Squivas on percussion, Sunny Bacquizal on guitars, Joel Salvador on drums, and believe it or not, si Biboy Garcia ng Keso ang nag-turntable sa kanilang first album. Itong mga bandang nakilala nila sa pagigig ang tumulong sa kanila na makabuo ng kanilang first demo CD. Ang first demo CD nila ay naglalaman ng tatlong original songs. During the birthday party of Mong Alcaraz, inimbitahan nila itong mga tropa nilang banda para mag-perform at makijam at para pumarty with Chico Sai. It could be destiny na naimbitahan nga ng isa sa mga banda ang anak ng isang ex executive sa isang record label sa Pilipinas na gustuhan nito yung mga original songs ng Chico Sai and ayon kay Mong Alcaraz after a few weeks tinawagan siya nito para tanongin kung interesado ba silang mag-sign sa isang record label at dito na nga sila si Nine ng EMI Philippines sa taong 2000 nung nirelease ng EMI Philippines ang debut album nilang Revenge of the Giant Robot under their original name Chico Science itong album na to ang naglalaman sa kanilang first hit single na Sink or Swim. Single put them on the radar as they won the NU Rock Awards for Best Recording and Best Directed Music Video for MTV Pilipinas. This album has a heavy influence on new metal and rap metal, which was very popular at the time. It gathered a lot of attention from the alternative music scene. Dito na nga unti-unting nakilala ang bandang Chico Science. However, they found out na meron pala silang kapangalan. May isang Brazilian hip-hop artist na nagngangalan ding Chico Science. Nung una, hindi nila masyadong pinansin kasi kala nila hindi naman big deal dahil hindi naman sila international artist. However, this particular artist keeps on popping up when you google the band. Kaya naman, pinalitan nila yung pangalan nila from Chico Science to Chico Sai. When they were creating their sophomore album, They sought the help of some unknown record producer by the name of Raymond Marasigan. Para sa mga hindi nakakilala sa kanya, siya lang naman yung drummer ng hindi masyadong kilalang bandang Eraserheads at siya rin yung singer ng hindi rin masyadong kilalang bandang Sandwich. 
Dito nga sa second album na to, nagsimula silang magkaroon ng mga haters. And let me tell you why. This album sounds nothing like Revenge of the Giant Robot. It sounded more melodic and hardcore compared to their first album. At syempre, alam naman natin na napakaraming gatekeepers sa OPM alternative scene. According to Migi Chavez, when they were writing the second album, they were listening to a lot of melodic and hardcore stuff like Glass Jaw and Quicksand. And working with Raymond Marasigan gave them the opportunity to explore and expand their musical style. Raymond pushed them to have the freedom to grow as musicians. Hinayaan nga sila at in-encourage pa ni Raymond na wag magpakulong sa isang style o musical genre. And the result was their second album, Method of Breathing. This album contains one of their hit single, Paris. Sounded nothing like Revenge of the Giant Robot. At kung paikinggan nyo yung buong album, malayong malayo nga ito sa kanilang first record. And if you pay close attention, ang layo din ng tunog ng album na to sa mga kasabayan nilang banda tulad ng Slapshock, Greyhounds, at Keso. This album started to divide their fans. Yung iba sinasabi, they did this para mag-mainstream or para mag-sell out. Which to me sounded very ridiculous. This album contains a lot of heavier tracks like Rolento, and glass is broken. Para sa akin, the only radio-friendly track from this album was Paris, which is obviously yun lang yun narinig ng mga haters. After fulfilling their two-record deal with EMI, Chico Sai moved to Viva Records. At noong 2004, nirelease nga nila yung kanilang most experimental album para sa akin. Ang album na ito ay Icarus. They continued to work with Raymond Marasigan at this time, sinama ni Raymond Marasigan yung isa pang unknown artist na tropa niya, si Buddy Zabala. Sa mga hindi nakakakilala, si Buddy Zabala ang basis ng Eraserhead The Dawn at Moonstar 88. This album saw another steer away from their previous albums kasi it sounded more progressive and experimental. Meron to mga weird time signatures. At mga heavier songs. At malayong malayo rin ito kumpara mo sa una nilang dalawang album. This album contains the singles Shallow Graves and Theme from Conversations with Fire. Itong mga single nga na ito ay nakatulong sa kanila para mas lalo pang makilala. Na-recognize sila ng MTV Pilipinas at ginawa silang Featured Artist of the Month in the year 2004. At tinapos nga nila ang taong 2004 on a high note sa pag-perform the NU107 Midnight Year End Countdown. According to Migi Chavez, when they were writing Icarus, the band was going through a lot of personal issues at nag-translate nga ito sa kanilang music. At syempre, marami na namang ebas yung kanila mga haters. Sino sabi nila na nakikiride lang daw sa uso at sumusunod sa trend ang Chico Sai kaya daw ganun yung tunog ng Icarus. To me, this statement was the exact opposite. Nung time na yon, wala naman silang kapareho ng tunog sa OPM alternative scene. Ginugol nila ang sumunod na taon sa pagsusulat ng panibagong record at nung 2006, nirelease nga nila yung kanilang self-titled album. Para sa akin, this is the album that started it all kung sino ang Chico Sai ngayon. At para sa akin, ito na rin yung album na tuluyang nagpaiyak sa mga gatekeepers. The self-titled album saw another change on their musical style. Iniwanan na nila completely yung mga heavier sound in favor of more poppy and more melodic songs. Sa album na to, nanggaling yung kanilang mga hits tulad ng A Promise. Now you are my At syempre, yung sikat na sikat na Chico Sai Vampire Social Club. Brothers, I know 
Sa isang interview ni Migi Chavez sa Offstage Hang Podcast ni Raymond Marasigan at Darren Lim, sinabi niya na nung sinusulat nila yung Revenge of the Giant Robot, they were too young and full of angst. At noong mga panahon na yun, hinahanap pa nila yung kanilang sariling identity. They had a chance to explore and expand their musical style sa method of breathing at nagpatuloy nga yon sa album nilang Icarus. As they mature and grew older, they decided to talk about what will be next for Chico Sai. Dito na nga nila napagpasyahan kung anong direction ba ang dapat puntahan ng sound ng Chico Sai. At syempre, marami na namang ebas yung mga haters. Sinasabi nila na nagpapapogi lang daw ang Chico Sai kasi ito yung panahon ng pogi rock. Para sa mga hindi nakakaalam or hindi inabot yung Pogi Rock era, ito yung mga panahon na nagsulputan yung mga bandang Sponge Cola, Soap Dish, Fuchsia, Hail, Mayonnaise, at marami pang iba. I have nothing against those bands. I think they were great, but I guess you get my point. The band gained more popularity as the music video for the single Chico Sai Vampire Social Club won the favorite rock video at the 2008 Mix Music Awards. Para sa akin, itong album na to ang pinaka-influential para sa Chico Sai. They gained a lot of followers. Dito na buo yung mga bampira, which is what their fans call themselves. At para sa akin, naging gateway ang album na to para ma-expose yung mga mainstream audience sa iba pang mga bandang tulad ng Typecast at Urban Dub. Now, oh, bago mag-react yung mga gatekeepers dyan, kumalma kayo. I'm not saying na Chico Sai o ang album na to ang naging dahilan ng popularity ng typecast, urban dub at marami pang iba. I'm just saying na ito yung naging gateway para mas ma-expose pa yung mga mainstream audience sa ganitong type of music. Aminin man natin o hindi, nagkaroon ng cultural impact ang album na to sa OPM alternative scene. Dahil sa album na to, mas marami pa ang na-expose sa OPM emo scene noong mga panahon na yun. For their next two albums, naging consistent na ang sound ng Chico Sai. Although nag explore pa rin sila with sampling and synths sa kanilang sumunod na albums na Fly Black Hearts at This Is Not A Chico Sai Record Pero kitang-kita na yung consistency sa tunog nila. Through the years, marami ring nangyaring mga major lineup changes sa banda. At nagsettle na nga sila sa current lineup nila with Vic Guison on drums and Echo Del Rio on bass. I have nothing against those previous members, pero para sa akin, napakalaking upgrade ng pagsali ni Vic at ni Echo sa bandang Chico Sai. Echo Del Rio is one of the most underrated musician para sa akin. If you don't believe, you can check out his other bands like like Ujeja View and Bird. And don't get me started about Vic Guison. Bata pa lang si Vic, medyo nasundan ko na yung karir niya. Mula sa pagdadrums niya sa SOP hanggang sa pagsali niya sa Franco at ngayon, drummer na nga siya ng Chico Sai. Ito na yung lineup ng Chico Sai nung nirelease nila yung single na Revelation back in around 2018 and for me, it was a very solid release. When I wake up in the morning Para sa akin, yun talaga yung direction na gustong puntahan ng Chico Sai. At ngayon ngang na pag-usapan na natin yung history at discography ng Chico Sai, pag-usapan na natin kung bakit marami silang haters. In my personal opinion, it all boils down to these following things. Number one, yung constant na pagpapalit ng sound at style ng Chico Sai. As we all know, most listeners are gatekeepers. At ang mga gatekeepers, ayaw nila ng changes. Gusto nilang nakakulong lang ang isang artist sa isang style o sa isang tunog. Nagsimula ang Chico Sai bilang isang new metal band and they drastically evolved through the years. But aren't we all meant to grow and evolve? Hindi ba dapat yung mga artists magkaroon ng freedom to explore whatever style or sound they want? Hindi ba dapat maging thankful tayo na may mga artists na willing mag-risk tulad ng Chico Sai? Hindi ba dapat mas maging masaya tayo kung mas maraming tao yung nakaka-appreciate ng OPM alternative music? I mean, that's the goal, right? 
Number two, Chico Sai's frontman and vocalist Migi Chavez is very appealing to female audiences. At alam naman natin na ang OPM alternative scene ay puro mga lalaki. And let's admit it, every time na may mga nagugustuhan yung mga girls, especially when it comes to music or anything in general, ang reaction kagad ng mga pakul na lalaki ay, corny, corny nyo. For example, yung mga good-looking K-pop boy bands. They are extremely talented. At let's admit it, they are very good looking. Pag sinabi mong K-pop fan ka or fan ka ng BTS, ano sa tingin mo magiging reaction ng mga OPM alternative music fans? Oh, di ba? So to me, it's the same reaction with Migi Chavez. Migi Chavez is good looking and he's talented. He is in a popular band at nagugustuhan siya ng mga female audience. So ang reaction ng mga lalaki sa OPM alternative scene ay ah, papogi lang yan. I'm not sure if it's inget or insecurity, but you decide. Whether we like it or not, female audience, especially those young teenage girls, are the ones who will decide kung ano magta-trend at kung ano hindi. Because tayo mga lalaki, whenever we discover new artists, as much as possible, we want to keep it to ourselves. Ayaw natin silang makilala ng iba o ayaw natin silang sumikat. Gusto natin tayo lang nakakaalam for whatever reason. And that's to me, is very toxic. Kaya naman, karamihan ng mga OPM alternative audience na lalaki ay naiinis kapag kinikilig yung mga babae kay Migi Chavez. Shouldn't we thankful na dahil lang sa looks ni Migi ay nagkakaroon ng exposure ang OPM alternative scene at mas nakikilala pa? Number 3 Last but not the least, Miggy's singing voice may not be for everybody. Alam naman natin na mapa live man or recording, Miggy's voice may not be the greatest. But he showed a lot of improvement over the years. Kung ikukumpara mo yung singing voice niya mula sa method of breathing hanggang sa kanilang most recent release, kitang-kita mo yung improvement the way he sings. And bukod ba dyan, yung lyricism ni Migi Chavez is very underrated. Para sa akin, Migi Chavez is one of the greatest lyricists sa Philippine music scene. Kung hindi ka naniniwala, you can go ahead and check out the lyrics sa mga kanta nila. And believe me, it may change your opinion. Bukod pa dyan, there are a lot of singers in famous bands na hindi naman ganun kaganda yung boses pakinggan. And aside from that, most of them ay hindi nag-improve mula na nagsimula sila. Hindi ko napapangalanan, pero I'm pretty sure you know who I'm talking about. So even though a lot of people keep on hating them, they just keep getting bigger. Which brings me to the question, ano nga ba ang naiambag or naiaambag ng Chico Sai sa OPM alternative scene? Una, pinakita at pinatunayan ng Chico Sai na bilang isang artist, hindi mo kailangan makulong sa iisang sound or sa iisang genre. You can change as much as you want and progress to a direction where you always wanted to be. You may gain a few haters and alienate some fans along the way, pero pero if it means widening your audience and welcoming new listeners to your music, I don't see anything wrong with that. At the end of the day, you won't be able to please everybody and haters will always hate. Pangalawa yung kanilang self-titled album. Aminin man natin o hindi, it has a huge cultural impact sa OPM alternative scene. Tulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, ang album na to ang naging gateway sa iba para mas ma-expose pa sa OPM alternative scene. At dahil nga sa Chico Sai Vampire Social Club, nagkaroon ng mga communities yung mga teenagers ng panahon na yon at tinawag nga nila yung mga sarili nilang vampira, which to me made a lot of impact especially doon sa mga kabataan na feeling nila hindi sila accepted sa mga communities nila. They dress differently, they listen to different kind of music, and para sa kanila, they felt accepted. And finally, there's a community na they can feel that they belong. For a band like Chikusai who's willing to change and grow over the years and inspire a generation to feel accepted and build a community, well, to me, there's nothing to hate about that. Which brings me to the present time. While I'm researching and doing this video, I noticed that people are now somehow doing a retcon about how they viewed Chikusai. Dami ko na ikita na nagsasabi na fan daw sila ng Chico Sai since day one. People are now making a lot of positive comments about their music. May mga nagsasabi pa na they grew up listening to Chico Sai. To me, says a lot about them. May mga nagsasabi na in hindsight, Chico Sai has always been great and it looks like Chico Sai is finally getting the respect that they always deserve. They released a new music 
called Dust, which to me sounded very mature, and another shift to another direction. So with that being said, will they gather more haters or will they gain more audience with their new type of music? I'm not sure if I'm speaking too early because isang track pa lang naman yung nire-release nila at hindi naman siguro nito ini-embody yung buong magiging album. But who knows? Alright, that's it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this type of videos, please do not forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again next time.